Well, welcome to this very special video. We've never had a video for our YouTube channel that specialized in how to make like a bridal bouquet. So I was really excited moving to Nashville to meet our designer today, Melissa Broadwell of Vintage Floral, and she is going to put together a bridal bouquet in her style with this amazing color palette. And again, these are things you can apply to any style or any bouquet that you might make, just changing the colors and things. So I just wanted you to kind of have this tutorial so um, we can all learn together, because I'm learning too. So Melissa, welcome, come on Thank up. Thank you. And uh, I'm excited about this. Me this too. is a beautiful place. This studio is a shared space she works in. And this is an amazing uh, company that produces custom backdrops. So yes. We get that. We have two backdrops for one so today. Talisha Lee is her name. Oh. She's an amazing artist. <laughs> I have to give her a plug. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're glad she's here. So uh, anyway, Melissa, it's all yeah. yours. Take all it right. away. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Scott, for having me. I'm um, just really excited. I love to teach. I love, I don't get the opportunity very often because I, my company is called Vintage Florals. And we produce uh, events. We do uh, not all of the things that go into an event, just the flowers. I'm trying to stay in my lane because <laughs> events take a lot of people and I just want to do flowers well. So I've been doing um, flowers for about 20 years and I just still love it. I love working with brides and one of the things that I start with in a meeting with a bride is what kind of bouquet do you want? because I feel like bouquets, the, the bride's bouquet should set the tone for all of the, the design for the entire event. So um, I just love it. And it's also a picture into a bride's um, head and her heart of what she's drawn to. So I always have a bride send me pictures or show me, I tell the bride, bring pictures with you, create a Pinterest board, or you know, however you wanna collect your, your pictures, do that. Let's look at those together. And then I help her sort of narrow down the things that she likes because sometimes girls will come in and they'll have like 10 different bouquets that all are a little bit different. But usually and hopefully there is a theme that you can kind of start to pull like, oh, I see that you don't want your bouquet to be really tight. Is that true? Um, or I see that you like a lot of movement. Is that true? And she might be like, oh yeah, no, I actually don't like movement at all. I just like the color of that one flower. I'm like, well, that flower isn't real <laughs> because the photographer made it look that way. That's kind of the story for us florists, I think, um, is trying to educate while we listen and try to give our clients the product of their dreams. And hopefully they have come to me or to you because of the style that you do. If someone were to come to me and say, or maybe email me and say, hey, I want to do a wedding. I, I would love for you to do my wedding. Um, and I want my bouquet to be all really, really round and, and a little bit tighter. And I want you to put rhinestones in it. And I've actually done that before 20 years ago. And some people still love that. And I would kindly just say to her, you know what? I am not your gal, but I know another gal who does that really, really well. Because what I want to do as well is I want to create a product that I'm also good at. And so we're all good at different things. What I tend to be good at and what my teach my girls that work with me in my studio to be good at is um, garden inspired bouquets. So that is kind of what we're going to do today. And when I say garden inspired, that typically means that it is going to be a little bit looser. Um, and we can vary that. Some girls might want pieces that really create asymm asymmetry, a high point and a low point, but it's still balanced. And some girls do kind of still want to have a little bit more of a classic rounded bouquet, but they don't want everything to be at the same level. They want it to, you know, some pieces to be kind of coming out so it looks romantic. So I, I think my job has been done when I have created a bouquet that number one pleases my client because it's really not about me. Um, and number two, that's just really beautiful. And when she sees it, she feels like, okay, I can walk down the aisle. I have something in front of me that feels like a little bit of a security blanket. Um, I love and that. it just helps her to feel confident about who she is. Um, so that's what I strive for in really 
my floral design in general is pleasing my customer, but also doing the work that I'm best at. So today we have some gorgeous flowers. Scott helped, we kind of worked together to pick these out. Of course, he had his eye on all the yummy things at Import Flowers. <laughs> and um, I, I think you said, Scott, that um, you kind of were inspired by this hydrangea right here. I learned today its official name is Tardiva. And I was like, well, that's appropriate because it's like the diva <laughs> of hydrangea. I love this orange hydrangea. It's one of those, lo it's one of those like seasonal flowers that we wish we could have all year round. Um, but it's also what's kind of cool about seasonal flowers is it, it flows and it changes and we get to experience new things as the seasons go and it keeps us on our toes a little bit and it keeps us creative and that's a good thing. So this hydrangea right here, you can see that it has a lot of texture in it. It can kind of work as a filler and a greenery, but it also has color in it. It helps to tell our color story, which you can see is kind of some mauve, some blush, some burg almost like burgundy with this dahlia here. Um, some really, really rich fall blush tones. So I was just telling Scott, I think the transition from summer to fall might become one of my favorite times for flowers because we go from kind of being inspired by like hot colors to really kind of toning it down a little bit to these muted shades. We're not quite to the burnt orange pumpkins yet, but this is still really warm. It's really colorful, but it's also um, the colors flow really nicely. You know, Melissa, I'm going to be spontaneous here a little bit. Yeah. And I'm going to come closer with the yeah. camera okay. so we can get a close up of the Love flowers because I know what we're going to see here. So there's the Tardiva. And then we found this Nandina. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That has this beautiful, sort of blushy. It's like it's almost like a. It an looks like it's color. been hand painted. It does. And then some dahlias yep. from one of the local dahlia sources. Which um, this it's, her name's Erica Penn, and she is on social media, and uh, she grows amazing dahlias, and she's changed her flower farm names. I'm not sure how she's actually going by right now. So uh, then this is a wonderful new, not new, but a new rose to us called Vintage. Vintage. It's my new favorite. Vintage, it's my vintage new floral. It'll be <laughs> Melissa's new signature. It's my new favorite rose. We have these be. beautiful magenta lisianthus. God, they're gorgeous. That color. Some sedum. Yep. Some wonderful cremones. Butterfly ranunculus. And some uh, Bombay Solosha in that wonderful champagne color. God, I love so, that color. Sorry, Melissa, for interrupting, no. but I the know. The flowers from, of the show. From back here, it's sometimes hard to see, yeah. but, but this is. On that great. note, I wanted to talk a little bit about color palette here. Um, we already already kind of talked about, you know, the mauves, the vintage kind of toned down, summery, getting into fall colors. But in thinking about color palette, being inspired by the Tardiva Hydrangea here, we see a lot of different shades of pink, blush, mauve, some undertones of like maybe purple even going on here. So we are intentional to try to pick up all of those shades. And what I kind of usually tell my clients is we wanna create a beautiful watercolor with your flowers. So to get sort of the garden fresh look, in this instance, we want the, the colors to sort of flow from one to the other. And if we have one or two flowers that can represent even two colors, like the hydrangea, kind of encompasses this whole palette, then that is what we call usually a transitional flower. A flower that helps us to transition, say from this cream um, butterfly ranunculus to the blush and all the way to our darkest color here. So that really helps me as I'm choosing colors is to sort of think through what can help to what flowers can transition our colors there. And also want to use different sizes of flowers. So, you know, we have our, we have some greenery here with texture. We have our hydrangea, and then we have some larger flowers. We have, this is actually a pretty large rose right here. So this becomes a bit of a focal, a bit of a focal flower. It kind of helps to ground the, the bouquet, the arrangement. 
these dahlias are actually huge. We'll see how we do with these today, but they're like the size of my face. Would this be officially like a dinner plate dahlia, do you think? Or is it no, not that it's big? not it's not that big, but it is it's big. It is definitely on the bigger side. Yeah, and we have to be careful when we use really big flowers in bouquets. Along with that is also this um cremone. Sometimes I call it cream on. <laughs> it's not nearly as pretty. I'm gonna say cream on now, that's prettier. <laughs> But that's also a big flower, but this can also serve as sort of a filler and just a color moment in the bouquet. And then we have our medium, some of our, this is textural, this is kind of medium size. I would call these smaller dahlias, the more of a medium size. And then we have our dancing floater flowers. And that would be these smaller little flowers. I love to use something in a bouquet that I usually add at the end that sort of helps the bouquet to just dance a little bit. And so I don't, I know you guys have seen people on Instagram or whatever, and they'll take the bouquet and they'll kind of shake it a little bit. And that's a good thing. You know, if your bouquet moves a little bit, then you've kind of accomplished that garden, flowy, beautiful, lush bouquet that you're going for with this style. So I may start putting this together. Am I go for that? You are go. I'm Let's... gonna talk about, let me talk about tape and things like that. I'm okay. gonna be using, cause technical things are, Honestly, maybe 50% of what we do is technical and it is, you know, our mechanics that we use, so. Well, and the one thing too is a lot of times it's great to prep that yes. before you start. That's when, right. Because your hands aren't full of flowers. Oh man, so true. So I've, I've done that a little bit today already. I wanted to show you, I, I have tried a lot of different methods of bouquet making. What I have landed on is a little bit of a combination of things. I do like to tape as I go, but I don't tape every stem down. That's just personally what feels good to me. And I do use this, the Oasis um, floral tape that's um, a little bit more like duct tape, like it's thick and really strong. Um, I usually use the, the thinner one, like the one that's half this size, I just don't have it today. So I go ahead and I cut off five to six pieces of tape and I just have them right you know taped to the to my table right here all ready to go I also keep some wire nearby because I don't know that I'll have this problem today but um, sometimes a flower needs a little help sometimes ranunculus you know the heads are so heavy especially when they're not really in season those heads get really heavy and they like to droop and so um, with ranunculus specifically they have a hollow stem and if you cut the stem the same length as your wire a little bit shorter you're able to run this, this wire all the way up the stem until it hits the bloom so pretend like this is your ranunculus you run the wire literally all the way up that hollow stem you can do it with dahlias too that's not true this isn't so hollow when it gets to the skinny part with dahlias I will typically wire right into the head and then I'll tape, I'll tape that wire down. I don't tape all the way down because I don't want the wire to show at the bottom of the bouquet. But that can kind of help those flowers to stay. Um, what gauge wire is that? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. It's not a very thick. It's yeah. kind of a medium. It's not the thinnest, it's not the thickest. It's somewhere in the middle. And it's easy for you to work with. So that's that's the other important thing is yes. it needs to be something you can work with. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, I, this is probably the, the size that I use for most everything when we're wiring boutonnieres and things like that. So what I like to do is I like to lay all of my flowers out. And if anything needs to be wired, I'll go ahead and wire the flower before I get started. Um, specifically with Lysianthus, I always go in. I'm sorry if you love the little bud at the top, but we typically don't use the, the bud at the top unless, and sometimes I'll save it and use it as a little texture for boutonnieres or corsages. But for bou bouquet work, a lot of times this bud doesn't match the color palette. Sometimes it's even like lime green. And so we usually just go in and just snip that right out, leaving me just, just the flowers to work with. This lower one isn't going to show, so I may, I usually will go ahead and take that lower one off. 
I always save these pieces. We usually keep a little jar nearby that we keep all of our small pieces in because these work really well in centerpieces or in a boutonniere or a corsage. So save all your little bits. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and clip those out. And, oh, the other thing is Lysianthus. This is one stem with three pieces. If I were to put this in the bouquet, it's gonna really cluster like this, and that's a little that's a little much for me, especially how the bouquet is gonna go together. So I'm gonna get three stems out of this one, which is really great for your recipe counting and ordering flowers to know that you can sometimes get three stems out of one. Alright, so I like to start with greenery. I almost always start with greenery. In this case, I'll be starting with the hydrangea and with the nandina. And I like to use, think about my hand as the opening to a vase. So when you're making an arrangement, I always keep kind of a C, kind of a C with my hand. And I'll start, I really like this stem because it has a cluster and it's gonna, it's gonna lay in my hand really well like this. So you can see that I'm already starting to very loosely hold the flowers. I always go, uh, if I lay the flowers this way, I'm gonna make an X and go in the other way. So I'm going to have, I'm shape building right now. I'm building the base and also getting some of the shape for this bouquet. And it's gonna feel uncomfortable at first. It really does. It's kind of, there's a little bit of a balancing act that happens at first when you're starting out. But be patient. And if it doesn't feel right, doesn't look right, just put it all back, just put it all down start over. I had to do that like two weeks ago. I had a bouquet, put it together. I looked at it. I thought, I just don't like it. And so I took it all apart and I actually went back to it the next day. And um, it came together a lot better the next day. So I am going XX and then I'm going to go in this other way here. I'm going to go in even lower because I want to start to build the inside of the bouquet as well so that I begin to have a foundation for some of these other flowers to be able to come out and be, be supported by some things that are happening down here at the bottom. So, starting with the one flower, we're going to go down low here as well. Always kind of playing around and messing with When I build a bouquet, I'm always, almost always, the bouquet is facing me. And I typically do build a bouquet to be, to have a front because the bride is pretty much gonna need a little space in the back of it to hold it up against her body. Now I do make the sides and the back pretty because you want her to see pretty things when she looks down. You don't wanna have just a flat nothing back to the bouquet. But um, I do, I do like to have a front to the bouquet, and I'll talk about how I distinguish that a little bit later. So we're building the hydrangea. I'm not going to use all of them. I'm going to leave a couple for the end. I love this stem because it has a little bit of a curve to it, and it's going to help to, I'm going to actually use it on this side of the bouquet to give me a little bit of shape this way. So you can see that my hands are pretty tangled up in this bouquet right now, and that's okay. I'm also not gripping it. If I were to, if I'm gonna shove, I'm just gonna grip the bouquet. And you'll see that this bouquet tightened up a lot. Then I'm gonna relax my hand like that, and it loosens up a lot. So, so I heard someone say one time that the more stressed, the more stressed you are when you're building a bouquet, you could like see it in the bouquet, <laughs> like. Like, oh, that's, that's a stressed out bouquet because she was stressed and nervous when she made it. I'm 
always nervous before I make a bouquet. It's been 20 years and I still have to gear up for it because it's like the most important piece to me of the wedding because it's the thing the bride's gonna carry. A lot of pictures are gonna be taken out of it. So, you know, I have to be strategic about the, about the time of day and when I put the bouquet together. I try not to put it together at the end of the day because I'm tired and I'm done creating. So for me, I usually need to put it together toward, uh, towards the beginning of the day when my creativity is fresh and I have energy for it. So, all right, so my hands are kind of relaxed. They're a little bit tangled up. I'm gonna go with a little bit of greenery now. Now, Nandina has a lot of pieces that come out from it. So you've gotta take the one stem and kind of cut pieces out of it. So we've already done that a little bit. And I'm gonna take this piece Honestly, this is one of the prettiest pieces, so I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it to maybe put in there at the end. It's kind of a fun, wild, fun piece here. I'm always kind of putting the bouquet, testing it out before I grab it. So, you know, what does it look like there? Or what does it look like over here? I may put it, it feels good right here, but I may end up clipping a little bit of it out in a little bit. I kind of like the way that this is coming out a little bit too much, so I'm just going to clip into it. Because what I like is some of these pieces hanging out on this side. I'm going to get a little bit more of that Nandina. Kind of, and what I'm doing is I'm going around the back and I'm grabbing it with this finger, just like that. I'm holding it there, not taping yet. This piece has a natural bend to the right, so I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna let it follow the line of this piece that's coming over this way, and I'm gonna tuck it right in there and grab it. As the stems start to tangle, my hand can let go a little bit, and you like kind of feel it happening. It's almost like if you have a vase and you're, you're going in X, and then opposite side, X, it starts to build a grid within your vase. And I know you've seen it happen when you've made just table arrangements or a vase at home in a glass, in a glass or a mason jar. There's that grid that happens. Well, that's what I'm trying to achieve with my hand right now is that grid, that vase on the inside. <clears throat> Melissa, one of the things I love about how you're using the Nandina is you can get, when you cut it up like that, one bunch of Nandina can go a long oh, way. Oh my goodness, it's yes. It's amazing, yeah. Yes. I had a wedding a few weeks ago and I needed like 20 bunches of a, green, a, a, a type of greenery to do for tall greenery arrangements on tables, like big, you know, greenery on stands kind of thing. And the greenery that I wanted didn't end up coming in and so I ended up getting Nandina and I think I had 10 bunches of Nandina that we were able to use for the whole wedding instead wow. of like 20 bunches of greenery. So I saved money. <laughs> But yeah, Nandina is a great, it's a really good filler. Um, so that's all I'm gonna do with the Nandina for now. I'm feeling good about where this is going as far as the shape and how it's starting. We kind of have a little joke in the studio that sometimes we'll green something up and we're like, okay, all done. <laughs> I need flowers. We just love the, the greenery and the texture so much. Um, obviously we want some flowers. All right, the next flower I'm gonna use is the sedum. I like to use something like sedum or yarrow, even baby's breath, to also start to put down at the base of the bouquet. Now be careful with baby's breath. Your client might like hate baby's breath. So if you use it as a base or like, if you didn't have this amazing hydrangea to create a foundation, you would maybe need to use something like sedum or yarrow. Um, I'm trying to think of another flower that's like Queen Anne's lace. Queen Anne's or... lace, yeah, anything like that that can sort of fill out the bottom and start to give structure and texture to your bouquet. So I'm going to use some of the sedum for that. Also, sedum has all these little spaces that you can put stems. These other stems can feed into this, and it sort of helps to hold them into place. So it's a very helpful flower. Okay, honestly, at this point, I feel like this tangle is gonna hold itself up. So I'm gonna untangle my fingers and 
I am now back to holding the bouquet with ju just with my C. It's actually a closed C. It's more like you can kind of see that my fingers are touching now. Not going to tape quite yet. <clears throat> All right, here's the sedum. I'm going to take that in and go at the base there. And then I'm going to take another stem and I'm going to put it back in here. Sort of continue with that. Rounding out of the bouquet. And I'm going to take another piece and I'm going to go. And that formed a nice little triad, one, two, three of those. See that just kind of gave more texture down the base at the bottom there. Well, let's, let me get a close up of it so we can kind of see yeah, sure thing. where we're at with things. And you can see the grid you've put together. Yep, you can and, see the uh, tangle, the tangled mass of flowers. Yeah. It's pretty right. on top. Okay. Sometimes stems move too, and you have to just keep adjusting them. <laughs> Okay, I am going to show y'all how to use this flower because, you know, this is a more standard flower that you'll find, but the color is gorgeous and the color makes a lot of sense. But the cremone, um, if you don't have dahlias, the cremone is a really nice substitute for dahlias. You can get these in a lot of different colors now. And we're talking like the cost difference is like, five to seven dollars a stem for a dahlia maybe is that right i don't know something like that yeah i mean it's, it then, is a definite savings and then cremons are going to be like two dollars a stem dollar dollar eighty maybe yeah so less, yeah. a cremon is a great substitute for for dahlias and you can tell it has a very similar look similar structure you won't get the coloring but it's good so i'm not going to make the cremon my, my focal flower because i really want to work with the dahlias a little bit but for that color, it's so pretty to tuck that one down in there, just for the texture of it. I might put one back here. And I might, I might just use those two for now, actually. So I'm just gonna do those two and see how it already just started to brighten up that bouquet a little bit by pulling in some of those lighter tones here. I'm now gonna go in with a vintage rose, which is so beautiful. And, yep. I'm gonna go in. One thing I want you to notice while I'm doing this is that I'm gonna make an effort to never put one flower um, at the same level as another flower. So this helps to create movement within your bouquet. Textures help with that but also placement of your flowers. So you can see if that flower is on the same level as say the sedum, it will start to round out this bouquet in a way that will compete a little bit with the movement that we're trying to achieve. So I'm gonna pop that out just a little bit more like that. And I'm gonna get another one going over in this space. And I'm gonna twist that in Slowly, so it doesn't move other flowers. So Melissa, I want to ask a quick question. Yep. When work, you know, so many of the roses that that wedding professionals work with um, are different shapes and sizes. These yes. really are big roses. They are. It's big ones. So is that is that a good thing, a bad thing, or just something you just you design a little differently because of that, or? Yeah, I think you just have to be really thoughtful about how to use big roses. Um, I'm not going to use very many stems. I might just use three of these and I'll probably, because I have the dahlias, I'm gonna let those dahlias shine a little bit. This is working really, really well for color palette and texture, but but when I when I am ordering, if I have a, a rose heavy bouquet, for example, I will probably have three different kinds of roses. So I'll have maybe some larger ones that blow open bigger, and then I might have like a sweetheart rose, like a champagne, which is right. my favorite. Uh, and then I'll also have a garden rose in there that has a little bit more droop and movement to it. Yeah, it's um, a way to change up, yeah, to kind of not have like, too much, my technical term is matchy-matchy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so again, like, 
thinking about roses, well, a rose is a rose. It's not. I mean, there's a lot of different roses that open up differently. Some are ruffled, some are tighter. So this, this specific stem is the one that we have been looking at, and it is so beautiful, and it is blowing open a little bit more. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put it right there because it's so pretty. Actually, yeah, so we're going to work with that for a minute. Haven't done much with the back yet, but we're kind of letting it. And honestly, I'm looking at this right now, and I'm singing one, two, three. And I don't, I don't really want that. So probably I may end up pushing this to the back a little bit, or I may even end up clipping it out in the end. You might just have to go. <laughs> so that's all the rows I'm gonna do for now. I am now gonna put a little bit of this coxcomb in, or celosia. Celosia is a prettier I love the texture here. I'm just gonna go right in. Again, I like to test things out and see where they look the best. Might try it right there for a minute. We'll see how it goes. Celosia is also kind of a big flower, you know? It and is. so we have to kind of watch what we do here too. And the stem is really thick. Cutting it. Sometimes I like to pair things a little bit. So if I've got one, one here, I might do another kind of next to it to group things just a little bit. Again. And you can see because I have so many textures, I'm using two to three of every of every stem to start with. That's kind of And then because I have two over here, I'm gonna even that out a little bit and I'm gonna put one over here. Oh, that's awesome. At this point, this is feeling a little cumbersome in my hand. So I'm gonna go in and I'm not gonna cut them short yet, but I am going to take some weight off and cut those stems so that I have more control. Right now it feels like the stems have all the control <laughs> because they're so heavy. <laughs> I'm gonna be the one in control. Okay, so that's good. Haven't done anything in the back yet, we will. All right, I'm going, let's see if what's gonna happen with these big guys, curious. They're so pretty. Do you wanna take those leaves off? Here you me. Hmm? No, I was gonna say if that, I can oh, I think I got off. it. I mean, sometimes I, you know, we use our <laughs> teeth, <laughs> you know, armpits, a little everything. Okay, this is a big flower, so. I mean, that's a little much, right? It is, it's too much. But we can put it down here. We're just gonna try that, I'm gonna try that. And then this one, I actually need to take off that really big stem that's next to the flower. So I'm gonna just trim that off carefully so that I just have this one room to work with. I'm gonna have that come back in here. I'm not going to front face. I like for the flowers to do natural things. So dahlias might look this way, might look that way. In this case, I'm going to have it go a little bit like this. Let me come a little closer so we can see that again. The dahlia, I don't necessarily want them to both be front facing. But a more natural way would be for that dahlia to turn one way or the other. So I'm going to have it turn that way just a little bit. And I'm actually going to pull that rose down a little bit. This is color palette is crazy. It's so great. Yes, it's so great. Okay. All right. I'm feeling like I need to fill in this back area a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and one of these big roses back in here for a little stability. That's good. This hydrangeas want to steal my dahlia show. We might have to move it in just a minute. We're gonna go with this. Okay. This is feeling like I can't hold it on my own anymore, so this is the point where I'm gonna start to tape a little bit. 
So I'm gonna put that piece of paper right under my thumb and I'm gonna move, instead of shifting the bouquet in my hand, I'm gonna shift my whole arm and get that tape around there. My hand, if you keep your hand in the same place, your flowers shouldn't shift too, too much. And I have small hands, so I have to, I start to hurt a little bit. Now that it's taped, I can really take a look at what's going on here. Okay. And if it's taped kind of loosely, you really can um, see. You can still move things around. This hydrangea, I'm going to move it because it's, it's, you can see that it's sort of covering up some of my shape. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut it out really deep. Yep. And that just cleared away some space in there. I'm still gonna use it, and I may actually take a longer stem. Okay. I'm gonna add in a couple of these little babies. I'm seeing height here, but not on this side. So I'm gonna go in there. And I'm gonna let one pop out right here. And you'll see I didn't go here, which would be fine if you need to have it more contained, but I want the bouquet to flow just a little bit more. So we're gonna let that come out a little bit further. I almost always have the smaller flowers float out a little bit more. And I'm going to come around back here and have one kind of popping out right there. Okay, now I want those dahlias to stay in place, so I'm going to tape again. Again, going under my thumb, wrapping around. Sometimes you can also trade hands just very carefully if it's a thick bouquet. There we go. Okay. All right. At this point, I'm starting to look for holes, and I use, I do have a mirror set up over here. Um, I'm gonna, I like to hold it in front of me and kind of turn towards a mirror, and it's just a different perspective. It's further away. It gives me an idea of what the photographer is going to capture when the photographer is shooting too. And so what I'm seeing is that this side looks really full and this side isn't quite as full. And so I'm gonna add a little something in this area right here. I haven't done any of the butterfly ranunculus yet and these are dancy fl dancing flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe I can achieve that with a butterfly Get one in there. So I, I have to say this because I'm about ready to just burst here. <laughs> um, when, when we started pulling these colors together with this Tardiva hydrangea, yes. um, of course, you know, this is, this is the thing that I try to tell people sometimes, you know, some, so many times we are driven by an image or whatever, but for myself, when pulling flowers, it's, it's often in, and pulling flowers for ourselves, mm -hmm. not with someone else's sure. color palette of mine. Yeah. But when you see like that Tardiva and then, and then, I mean, that, co those colors to me are mm -hmm. phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, they just, Fantastic. I'm, I'm so happy with the way everything is playing together yeah, me too. and I'm like and, and sometimes that's it it's yeah. just you pick a color yep. you pick a flower one flower and then you just see what goes yes and that's, let nature lead lead, lead absolutely, the way absolutely absolutely we um my husband and I have a coffee shop and I do flowers for the coffee shop every week and that's what I do when I walk into import flowers I usually start with one flower because I have to have a budget, <laughs> but I but I want to change it up every week, and so I start with one flower, and one flower usually kind of leads the way, or even a, a bunch of greenery that's amazing mm -hmm. too, like the Nandina, right? Can inspire an entire color palette. So I love this color palette too; it's just so pretty. Okay, so I want to fill out this area, and I also want to try some of these butterfly ranunculus. I'm cutting a couple of blooms off because. 
because I don't need that much of a cluster. So what's pretty about this is that center is the same kind of blushy peach mauve color that's happening in this rose, some of it in the dahlia, in the cremons there. So, and I, my hope is that this is going to lighten up lighten up the palette just a little bit although I like how saturated it is too so okay so that we're gonna see how that works a little bit I am working with these kind of in one area right now also don't really want it to compete. <laughs> Sometimes we'll have an ingredient that we end up, you know, saying no to, even though we bought it. What do you mean by ombre? Like it seems a little darker here and it's going a little bit lighter over here. That can be a nice effect sometimes. But you may also want to just give them a little hint. And pop a little, a little bloom in. Kind of let that float around there. Let's see about that. Okay. And for the sake of just using all of the ingredients that we have, because they're all so beautiful, Let's see, we're gonna play a little bit with this gorgeous kind of magenta colored um, Lysianthus. I'm gonna let this, so now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of feeding the stem through and wherever it kind of comes out, I pull it on the other side. So you can see this side of it okay. I'm gonna have a couple of those popping out on that side there. And You can kind of see that the, the butterfly ranunculus are doing a similar thing that the lysianthus are doing in the way that they kind of float out of the bouquet. It's pretty. All right, I'm going to tape this and take another look. there. I also like to look at the sides of the bouquet. So this side looks a little bit empty to me, so I'm going to go and plug in this rose so that if she has it up against her body like this, there's a little space actually, which is nice. I like for there to be a little space that's not hitting her dress. And you've got beautiful things happening here. Oh, sad. And then also beautiful things happening here, but it's a little different. I love that. Those butterfly ranunculus are all kind of gathered here, but then we have a little bit of a hint here, so it's not just all one-sided. We're kind of letting it float through the bouquet. Now I will, I, while I do like this space, I also don't want the bride to go, well, that's kind of a weird empty space. So I will put something small there, even if it's maybe like a small dahlia, like this. Looks really sweet. And you could even, if you have another small piece of filler, or in this case, this hydrangea, you can put it kind of underneath it to support a little bit. And then just tape. 
take that down. Okay. So now, for example, if you if she's holding the bouquet like this, it's great. You're looking at on both sides. If she happens to hold it down like this, it still has a pretty mummy. A pretty moment's going all the way around but the prettiest thing is, is here. So really quickly, I will show you, I'll usually cut this down a bit. We're gonna finish off the bouquet with ribbon. When I'm cutting stems, there's a lot of stems in this bouquet. I like to go pretty short because I don't want those stems to hit her dress and kind of make a mess on, her, on the dress. And then also if the stems are too long, she's not able to hold her bouquet out like this at all without them just hitting her. Um, so I, I like to cut stems a little bit shorter and I go straight across. Cutting <laughs> dahlias is like cutting celery. It's the same sound. <laughs> That's a pretty clean, clean cut there. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna clear a space. The back of the bouquet is fairly flat, so we can lay the bouquet down carefully. And I have some really pretty um, Tono & Co, um, kind of a sheer silk ribbon today that is a little bit more neutral than the flowers, but it's kind of sheer. So if you're lucky enough to have a bride that likes trailing stems, trailing ribbons. Anything silk is just over the top and beautiful. So I'm gonna... And I want you to be able to see. So I like to go, I like to start with the middle of the ribbon. I like to go over, we crisscross in the back. I usually do that a couple of times. This is such a delicate ribbon. It's like, it's like playing with tissue paper. If, you're, if your tape is still showing, you might wanna go around one more time, but that is good. And then I'm just gonna go over. I like just a really simple square knot. Sometimes if you have enough ribbon to work with, you can do bows and they kind of hang like loops and that's really pretty. do kind of a square knot here. And that second knot, I'm not gonna pull as tight. Silk ribbon really kind of catches on itself, so you don't typically have to tie it as tight. And that top part of the knot is really pretty if it's a little bit loose there. And then you do, you will need to look at the ends of your ribbons because up against a white dress, the end of the ribbon, um, if it looks messy or wrinkled, it will need to have a pretty good, nice, sharp cut on it because it will show in photos. All right, so. There we go. There's our Voila. Voila. Let me get a close up. Whoops. Beautiful. How about that backdrop? I know. It's like <laughs> People only knew. It's you know we planned everything. I know so. it. Well, thank you, Melissa, so oh, much. Oh man, it was such a pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's been fun.